got my fingers crossed here. <laughs> One more time, this will be a um, pencil drawing. I'll be doing a um, realistic pencil drawing of these sheep. You are invited to draw with me, to draw your own thing or to draw what I'm drawing, whatever is fun for you. So. <laughs> oh my gosh, fingers crossed here. So, let's see. Let me know if you find me and if you can see. And <laughs> uh, thank you for the thumbs up. And let's see. Um, ah! <laughs> Welcome back, cars. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad. That was... Uh, Technical difficulties uh, are are frustrating. <laughs> so, uh, but welcome! I'm so glad you found me again. Um, I thought these sheep would be super fun for um, for Valentine's month and. There we go. So you can see I pull up my images on an old computer that I keep right next to my, um, where I draw and paint. And, um, and I really like doing it that way. I used to print photos or, um, you know, when I wasn't drawing from life. And, um, and I never liked, uh, just using up the, the paper and the, and the ink and all of that. And also I enjoy the flexibility of being able to zoom in and zoom out and recrop and kind of think about those subjects um, with the computer. So that's why you see the computer in the background on the left there. And so I love just a regular old number two pencil, but I usually use a much softer pencil um, when we draw together because it shows up better on YouTube. And so let's see. I'm so torn, I've got charcoal. And a 4B and a 6B. I'm going to jump in with a 4B and uh, maybe switch it up in a little while. But um, so <laughs> welcome. It's so nice to see you. And here we go. Um, these guys, so the source photo is from a photographer that um, posts their photos on Pixabay. Um, and they already did this beautiful job with the cropping. And, um, and I love this, just having this kind of X right in the center. Um, and um, that's fun. I'm going to get a little closer because I love their eyes. And I'd like to have space to uh, look at that a little bit closer. So I'm just trying to get some pr basic proportions in here. Where do I want these two guys? And um, try not to get detailed yet. So let me know if you are also drawing today. And um, looks like we might have lost somebody. I hope she finds us again. <laughs> uh, 
I, uh, I feel like I haven't had technical difficulties in quite some time, but um, today, oh boy, it just went wonky. Huh. Yeah, I wonder if what we're seeing is, um, yeah, that that is interesting. Um, let's see. So Kara said that the, the building is a little confusing because there's this uh, shadow right here. It looks like the building edge, but I wonder if there's something underneath like a, uh, like a stone or brick build up and then, um, and then the wood is sort of outset on top of that. That's interesting. There's so many farms that have just this gorgeous, um, like just such a functional architecture where it changes as time goes on and, um, and you know, old buildings are kind of falling apart right next to new buildings that are um, you know, just shiny and, um, okay, so I'm trying to figure out where are these ears overlapping right in this area. So, just trying to get that, the, how these two animals are fitting together here. And... Let's see. The black sheep looks like its head is, um, you know, it's looking straight forward. We're getting this almost perfect profile. And then it looks like, um, I can't tell if there's any tilting this direction or not. It, it doesn't really look like it. Um, trying to see where the edge of that ear is and whether this ear is lower than that ear because there's tilting happening here or just because the the ear is at uh, more of an upward angle on the white sheep and So this photographer, I didn't look around very much at their, at their different um, photos. So um, I'm not sure what country they're in. Um, yeah, there's really different farm buildings in um, you know, some countries than you know, what we might see here locally. So I'm just trying to get the big shapes in here. You can tell I'm holding my pencil way far away so I don't get sucked into any details um, before I'm confident about my general shapes. And then this goes back here. And so I saw uh, one cute a uh, photo of a sheep and I thought oh I want to see more and um, and and then when I saw this one I thought oh that's perfect for Valentine's Day or Valentine's month um, these guys are funny they have um, like their body shape changes so much with their um, when their wool grows in and so that that whole thing is very interesting i'm going to turn the light on over here Let's see a little bit better Turned on the sun 
smooth. Ah, uh, it does look like we lost somebody. That that's too bad. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> I love it tating the shed back here. That that is fun. Uh, and There's this muzzle area right here. This, look at this wonderful smile the white sheep has. That's just fun. And then a uh, little nose right there. Okay, and their eyes are very high up on their heads. Let's see. And uh, different animals have such drastically different amount of forehead above the eyes. It's, uh, it's really interesting. And these guys have really expressive eyes here. So I'm just trying to block in where exactly this part is, and narrow down that shape a little bit. Feels like a long distance between here and there. I might have exaggerated that a little bit. Let's see. just made it a little bit more narrow. I'm going to lower the chin a little bit and then the proportions this way I think will make more sense. So as I get a little bit more clear on where these different things go. I'm putting in a little bit darker marks. Um, but I'm still trying to do it in such a way where I'm not denting the paper because I, I want to be able to keep moving these marks um, for a very long time. love this smile. <laughs> it just, there's something about that that just really makes me happy. Okay, and so I think it's important to, like, as you go along when you find something you love, like, just to notice it, and uh, that way it, it gives it more of a chance of uh, still being there in the final drawing. Liz, welcome! <laughs> and uh, let's see. The black sheep's, uh, so Christ says the black sheep's curly gray highlights. Really lovely. Yeah, yeah. So this is definitely the kind of thing that you could spend any amount of time on. And, um, you know, you could just scribble in 
um, and get something really fun, you could uh, <laughs> you could look really hard and try to capture the sort of ringlet feeling. Oh my gosh. And so let's see about this guy. So I feel like they these guys probably hadn't have names. I wish I knew what they were. <laughs> For some reason, just white sheep and black sheep, it doesn't feel like, uh, like enough. Uh, but these guys are lovely. I can't imagine their people didn't name them. <laughs> Fantasy animals. I love it, Liz. Yeah. So are you combining features from different types of of animals. Okay. Or are you doing uh, like dragons or? Let's see. Okay, so I'm just holding up the pencil to the source photo to see the angle of. This guy's chin. Get that in there. And so the black sheep has this wonderful muzzle that is, uh, I love that this little beard right here. <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, yeah, sheep unicorns would be super, <laughs> super fun. Uh, and so let's see, there's these mingling ears here. So there's a little bit of overlap. I think that makes the whole... Um, form really interesting here and then the white sheep's head is a little bit higher than the black sheep's head and I think that also makes this form a little bit uh, more interesting so let's see So that didn't make sense. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, animals so much have um, like such specific proportions. And if, if you just change one little proportion, you end up with a different animal. And so for this guy, when I moved the... Um, the chin down a teeny bit it looks so much more like a cow and um, I don't know I just think that's interesting that with with animals there's just this tiny little difference in the proportions to get a totally different kind of animal and having the nose kind of flat from nose to top lip kind of did that uh you know it has that cow feeling <laughs> uh, a baby dragon and nine tails oh that sounds cute oh, nice i love it had a fun opportunity to draw uh, dragons a little while ago and um, 
I looked at source photos for um, different lizards to get some inspiration. And uh, oh my gosh, there's some cute lizards out there. And okay, so this guy has some cool hair. Both of them have some fun hair right on top of their heads. And. get the placement of the eye and the ear they're kind of in a line for both of these guys their ears and their eyes are on the same plane here on the same level and and also the nose dents in a little bit like a human nose here where the bridge is in a certain kind of relation to the eye. And so here's this. There's that. Let's see, I think I need to push that eye forward. Just some measuring here. Okay, and and okay. Okay, so you're gonna push this way out here. Do you have watercolor paint? How do you keep it nice? Oh, yeah. So I love watercolor paint. I don't use it <laughs> all that often, considering I do love it. Um, and so when you say, how do you keep it nice? Um, do you mean like keep it from all turning the same color while it's while it's on your um, your plate or whatever you use? And then I I meant paint, yeah. Um, as for that, I think having um, a plate to put it on is that is big enough um, that your colors don't don't mix together unintentionally is really helpful yeah yeah absolutely and um, uh, maybe next week we could do some watercolor uh, project next Thursday if if that sounds fun I'll show you how I how I set up my watercolors to to keep them from um, blending together but um, but mainly it's just using um, a, either a big enough plate that, um, that you can keep your color separate or just, um, just really paying attention to not letting them run together. Um, but uh, I think that's one of those ones where the materials helps a lot. Like, make sure you have a paper towel handy so if you notice you're trying to mix a nice bright green and the red is getting close you can wipe it um, watercolor is really nice in that um, it you can wet it again and uh, remove it so if you have an old um, plate or uh, something like that that you can use. Um, you can wipe it off afterwards and um, and just use it again and again and again. Um, and, um, or if you keep your paints organized and um, you can just wipe off the part that's 
that you were really using and then keep the paint for next time and use it again and again um, but yeah uh, yeah if that sounds fun to you guys I think it'd be neat to do some watercolor sometime and uh, it's such a it's such a fun material and okay so I'm just trying to figure out how these shapes relate to each other this um, and then this it's so much warmer today I can hear the snow melting outside Right on, awesome. Yeah. And let's see. We could really do any kind of subject, so um I might find some more cute lizards <laughs> something with some bright colors <laughs> he was uh, talking about dragons but, uh, but uh, if there's something else that you guys would prefer to do with the watercolors just let me know I'm just slowly getting closer and closer to where these forms are. And, and I'm still thinking of this as um, movable lines and sort of just drafting this in, figuring out where it is. I love this um, sort of salt and pepper nose here. <laughs> Happy late Valentine's Day. make sure I made this one tall enough. So I'm measuring how tall the black sheep's muzzle is and then I'm going to compare it to something that I feel confident in. Or let's see, it's pretty close to the height of that guy's muzzle. It's about two eyes. Okay. Yeah, 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 that needs to be way bigger. So one thing that you can absolutely do if you are um, drawing and you're using a photo on a computer screen is you can zoom in until the stuff on your computer screen is the same size that you want to draw things. And then um, <laughs> that simplifies your measuring quite a bit. What a lovely expression this guy has too. It's uh, both of them. It's a very kind of soft smile, and um, 
I honestly don't know enough about sheep to know if their mouth expressions mean anything similar to what humans mean, but, um, But it, it sure looks sweet. And, okay, let's see. Move that up just a smidge. And, let's see. I'm just gonna find in the nose in here. And and I love the contours of their noses. Uh, it's just such a pretty, fun line. Okay, so now for the questions. Do they get more solid fur? Do they get squiggles? You can see I'm leaning towards the squiggles. And then there's the tighter fur right in this area in both of them and then with this sheep, there's this fun curly business that starts sort of here. What a neat distinction between this fun curly wool and and then the straighter, shorter fur on the cheeks. There's a sheep farm not too far from here. It's on a back entrance to the um, to the interstate, and um, I always I see the sheep and I love them. They they hang out over in the trees and uh, they're way too far away to <laughs> really see up close. Every time I see them, I think, oh, boy, it would be fun to be able to get up close and check those guys out. They're just, they're so pretty. So I'm just trying to nail down how, how these forms on the face work together. There's the um, strip of the nose here and then um, the highlight that comes in right in this area and in this area. So I'm trying to narrow down what does that mean about the form. And then down here there's this shadow right in this area. And so I'm trying to decide do I make my hash marks in this area relate to the fur? Or just choose a direction and have fun with that. I'm just going to choose a direction and have some fun hash marks in this area. And and there we go. So, and as always, please let me know if I'm drawing too lightly and you can't <laughs> see what I'm up to or if I'm doing anything else to uh, make it difficult to see what's up. And there we go. It's a uh, really kind of blindingly bright outside. So. I'm getting some nice natural light today. 
the sky is white and uh, the ground is white. And it does seem like one of those days where you'd, I'd have to be careful <laughs> driving for a long time or something like that. I have to wear some sunglasses to not get the like the snow blindness where you just uh, stop being able to see little things. Okay. So I'm going to give a little bit of value to this guy's whole form. And I just arbitrarily decided that um, my lines that aren't really trying to show a direction or anything are going to be vertical. And um, no reason for that. <laughs> I just, uh, well, I, I guess there is a reason. I was thinking that. Um, that for the lines that will go along with the fur, a lot of them on the face are kind of going at an angle. Um, and so if I'm just vertical with my big fill-in um, hash marks, that it might not conflict or look like it's supposed to have more meaning than it does. Okay, so there's a shadow from this sheep's chin onto this fur. So let me get a little bit of that in here too. and see how does the lit part of this sheep compare to the shadow part of this sheep. It's interesting. It's just something fun to think about and compare. And we get some really fun little uh, wooly lines over here to get there their backs and the tops of their heads. And so there's a little shadow right here on this wall. And this is the shadow that really shows, well on this one too, that shows how close together they are. So that seems kind of important here. Gonna very lightly put that in. <laughs> cool. Happy belated Valentine's Day. Oh, very cool. Yeah. I uh <laughs> it's a good it's a good holiday. I'm just going to add a little bit of value to this whole sheep. Let's see. So, the darkest part of this sheep really looks like it's around the, the forehead and this part of the face and the ear and then the shadow here. And so, let's see, I think this would probably be a good time to step back and make sure I'm okay with the drawing. Let me know how your drawings are going so far. And as always, everybody draws at much different speeds. 
So um, just have fun <laughs> and, and um, don't worry if you're going the same speed as me or you might be going twice as fast or, or um, much slower and all of that is just perfect. For a second before I get into details. Cool. And if at any point anybody watching wants me to um, change paces a little bit and show a way to um, get the sheep forms down or anything else just let me know um, so this I you know actually both their eyes um, are just so expressive and so beautiful and sheep eyes are so Oh, much different from from uh, people eyes. They remind me of um, I don't know snake eyes or different reptiles or something with their really interesting pupils and. Uh, I think um, I'm going to take extra care because sometimes um, <laughs> when things are really uh, kind of strange to, um, you know, or out of the normal range of uh, experience, can take a little bit of extra looking to really if I can zoom in. And, um, it can take a little extra looking to really get to the essence of it. And <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fun. And sometimes uh, doing fun like playing with the proportions in your sketchbook um, can be really fun and freeing you know and uh, so yeah go for it that sounds awesome Now their eyes always, it surprises me how high they are and also just their, um, their wild pupils. And this guy has amazing eyelashes. So I'm just getting some kind of um, organic shape here. The edge of those eyelashes, and there we go. And this guy's pupil. Let's see, it's covered up by this eyelash quite a bit. So I'm trying again to not press into my paper because that um, as soon as the paper gets dented it becomes much harder to move stuff and completely erase it okay so just gonna get some good value right in here and there's a little bit of 
ambiguous area, I guess I should say. To me, it looks a little ambiguous right here where there's shadow falling down, but also it lines up with the darker outside edge of the eye. And so I'm not going to spend time trying to figure out what that is. I'm just going to draw it as I see it. And then if it seems weird, then I'll, ins I'll look harder at what that might be. And, okay, and then this. such a, um, I don't know, the forms right in here are so interesting, and then you can, like, the closer you look, the more you start to see, like, um, like this eyelid, how, gosh, how large that is, and, uh, so subtle here. There's this nice darkness here, and then again up here. And then the bottom um, eyelid, or the part right into the eye, is, has a nice deep value right around it. So I'm really digging how the top or how these eyelashes are, um, I don't know, there's something about those that is really fun. So I'm going to keep exploring that idea a little bit, but uh, there we go. <laughs> oh yeah so Christ says sheep and goat eyes always remind me of frog and toad eyes yeah absolutely um absolutely that that's exactly what they look like it's like trying to put my finger on what they reminded me of but that's it I think it's interesting like when you see something that's so drastically different like this or um, animals with fur that's just a color that we don't get in human hair it, it always makes me wonder why like why don't why aren't there any humans with eyes like this <laughs> uh, and uh, it's interesting like obviously there's some value in it or the sheep wouldn't have them. But, uh, okay, so there's that and then let's see, I'm trying to figure out how does this shape 
of the nose. There's it's over here a little bit. How does that relate to the other shapes in the face? There's uh, a little bit more. This ear hair, the hair that comes over the ear, it reminds me a little bit of the eyelashes. And then there's that tag right there. play with this since I really like these soft eyelashes coming down over this um, over the darker values of the eye and uh, let's see if that same thing can happen over here in the ears I said when you find something that you like <laughs> Have fun with it, right? And so there's such a specific direction to the hair right here. And then it just curls. It's just starting to curl right on the edge. That's really fun. Oh my gosh. What cool curl curls. It's an ass. I love that. I didn't I just I just now noticed that how the curly wool starts right on the edge where these two sheep meet. So for this one, I'm following the um, the hair direction when I'm putting in the lines. Um, for this area down here, it's um, it's more of a wool than a, a direction, a single direction of hair. So I just wanted to get some value in and uh, see where to go with that later. <laughs> okay, so there's this fun smile, and uh, let's see. And the bottom lip, you can kind of see right in this area, get a little bit of that value in. And then you can see the pink of the nose right here. And just getting darker right in here since I'm starting to get more confident with where my things are. So what do you think? Would you guys... Uh, like to continue working on the sheep we could do something fun like do a little watercolor uh just kind of a quick watercolor something or other and then um work on the sheep or um or 
have a full day of watercolor next week and then um, pick the sheet back up the week after. So let me know if that sounds fun or if you feel like you'll be done with the sheet today. <laughs> Either way is totally fine. It's funny how the, the more you look, just the more you see and the more it's like, oh, there's so many different things we could do with this. <laughs> and okay. Up just a smidge. And let's see. I um I noticed when I was doing a lot of um of baby portraits and uh, mom and baby portraits that the difference between different facial expressions is so subtle and um, the thing that always surprised me the most is that um, this subtle difference is always between an expression and it's like opposite it's not really between a mild smile and a full-on smile it's uh, you know it's like the difference between a smile and a grimace is it's so tiny and uh, it's uh, it's always really interesting but let's see what in here is making this feel so much like a smile and uh, you know, look at the different muscles and and the lights and shadows just this really subtle thing right here. But <laughs> cool. Very, very cool. Awesome. Yeah. This, this is uh boy, what an what a neat neat source photo, huh? They do look so cozy. <laughs> so cozy and happy. Oh my gosh. Yeah, content. What a perfect word. So, let's see. Up. So, this guy has this nice big shadow right here. Kind of tells us more about where the eyelid is. And let's see. a little bit of a lighter area right here on the brow and then darker right in here There's this little white line across his ear or her ear, whichever, and just 
just going to leave that area and then I can decide later if that detail is, uh, you know, helps. <laughs> and so if you are a tidier type of a drawer than me, you might enjoy putting um, a piece of paper, yeah, piece of paper is better than a napkin, down and hold it steady that you can draw on so you're not just smudging. I don't actually mind the smudges here. I think they're fun to play with. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I have the feeling that their shepherd really loves them. This, uh, this, uh, to get a photo like this. Uh, or I guess I'm just assuming that it's their person that got the photo. Maybe not. But, Okay, and all right, so I guess one last little thing. I'm just gonna get some of this darker shadow on the wool, and I think there could be a way to combine like getting in the shadow and getting the sense of the wool. Um, and so, let's see, right in this area, the white sheep is definitely um, forward of the, um, the wool and not really like blended together. But then somewhere in here, it feels a little bit more like they're the the wool of both sheep is um, like leaning against each other, I should say. And we're they're sort of ending in the same spot rather than one being right on top of another. I'm just gonna pick a spot like right down here and go nuts. So <laughs> a little bit of value in here, a little kind of scribbly value, and I'm trying to keep it. Um, not uniform. And Let's see. And and then the same thing happens over here, where right up here, 
It feels like the black sheep is in front of the white sheep. Which right down here it feels to me a little bit more like their fur is mingled right on the edge there. Oh my gosh, this is starting to look like a circle drawing. The more I look at this white wool right back here. Um, I don't know if you've seen circle paintings before. Uh, it's this super fun thing that um, this uh, artist in Africa started where he um, wanted to bring some community together and uh, invited a bunch of kids, if I'm remembering the story correctly, <laughs> to um, participate in uh, painting circles. And, um, and they collaborated in some really neat circle art. And um, so when I was volunteer uh, kindergarten art teacher, I thought it was the most fun project we did. We did a circle painting where everybody collaborated and drew some circles or painted some different circles in different areas. And, um, and uh, there's a lot of overlap and it was really neat. But it's funny, like circles, um, it's the shape that people just love. <laughs> <laughs> it just makes makes people happy. It's fun. Okay, so I'm just trying to lightly get a little bit of that shadow here, and then this um, like how the shadows kind of coming together on the on the bottom edge of the black sheep, and then into the white sheep's wool here. It might be nice to kind of get a little bit of that uh, shadowy sense in and it's almost like this area right here is where the um, the white sheep's fur starts to really mingle with the black sheep's fur. It's fun. And you can see these uh, like rows of curls right in here. Oh my gosh. You can absolutely get sucked into curls <laughs> for, for a very long time. That'd be fun. Right? And I am very inclined towards uh, scribble drawing, um, just, just like uh, <laughs> sharing a bunch of circles right on top of each other. So <clears throat> this is super fun for me. Let me know what you think of of, uh, of drawing all the the curls if you if it's super fun for you or um, or if you're gonna kind of skip it and get some values in there and um, that's one of the things that's so fun about art is everybody has different preferences and you end up with different art because of that and uh, I think that's pretty neat. Getting a little bit more value in this sheep. And right in here. 
here especially. I love that the details on the black sheep are bringing the, um, the white sheep forward. <laughs> That's fun. Okay. And here we go. And let's see. Hannah. <laughs> Thank you so much. That that is super sweet and welcome. It is so nice to uh, have you here with us. it might be nice to get a little bit of value on this guy's eye before we um, call it a day. It seems uh, there's so much character in here. It just seems like that'll... <laughs> I'm still not feeling super confident about the placement of this eye. It needs to move up a smidge. And part of it is that I've added some details in here that I can't really see. So it's breaking up that form a little bit. Just gonna erase right into here and move this forward a little bit. All right, and a little bit more right into here. That seems better. Let's see. A little smidge. This eye has that wonderful um, ref highlight in it, the little white dot, and that could totally be the, the focal point of the whole drawing. Um, which There's a little shadow that falls back here. There we go. Let's 
Isn't that funny that it can go from like nothing to an eyeball so fast? <laughs> it's uh You really don't need very much information in order for something to read as an eye. Got this really sweet little smile too. And there we go. So let me know how your drawing went today and uh And if there's anything specific that you're looking forward to um, working on next week with it. And <laughs> it really is funny how um, how quickly something can go from um, just being sort of a gray area to being an eye. Doki. Well, um, <laughs> see. I think I'm going to call it a day. It's already 3.30 here. Um, I hope your drawing went well, and uh, I hope you had fun, and um, what about some news? Um, next Thursday maybe we'll start with like a little fun watercolor thing and then work on our um, sheep some more and um, and uh, the source photo is linked in the description it's uh, from a really nice photographer on Pixabay and um, and if you want to find out more about me that information is also in the description. Uh, you can subscribe and get notifications if you click the bell. Uh, next time I go live, <laughs> sorry about the technical difficulties this time. Thanks so much for hanging with me while I got the camera working again. Um, 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Very cool. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like I have a lot more, I can, a lot more distance to go with the shading. I, uh, so I will be doing that with you next time. And uh, kind of working on the expressions and how the forms are fitting together. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So cool. Thanks for spending time with me in the studio. And I hope you have a wonderful week. And happy Valentine's month. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and you're welcome. And thanks for joining.